sort of um, military presence does the U.S. have in Turkey, and what role has Turkey played, if any, in the um, the uh, wars in Iraq and Afghanistan? Um, the Air Force Base in Incirlik, Turkey, is a major supply route, a stopping um, point for supplies <coughs> to Iraq. I believe 70 percent of uh, supplies going to Iraq go through Turkey. I think one of the things that the President will be talking um, with um, Turkish officials today and tomorrow is how can Turkey help more in Afghanistan. Turkey has over <coughs> a thousand troops in Afghanistan and it's one of the NATO countries that has been helping the United States. How does that play at home in Turkey in a nation that is predominantly Muslim? Well, um, it's um, to Turkish interests that stability uh, uh, does exist in uh, Iraq. Um, if chaos um, overtakes the country, it's going to um, bear consequences on Turkey. Now, northern Iraq, where you have the predominantly Kurdish population, Turkey's um, the number one country in investment and number one trade partner. The, along that Kurdish border with, with, with I I Iraq, are there still disputed areas that Turkey contends that this is this is their their country, or are there are there still points of conflict between the Kurdish people in northern Iraq and and um, and northern Iraq and Turkey? Well, there's no dispute between the uh, Kurdish people of northern Iraq and Turkey with regard to territory. The dispute is on terrorism that the PKK terrorist group uh, uses bases in the mountainous regions that border between Iraq and uh, northern Iraq and Turkey as havens and then slip across the border uh, um, to conduct terrorist acts against the Turkish people. President Obama in Turkey today, the Associated Press reporting that the president says he's looking toward Turkey as an ally to help bridge the divide between Muslim nations and the West. He joined President Abdullah Gul at a news conference this morning after to uh, talks in Ankara. President Obama saying he wants to build on, quote, what is already a strong foundation, he said, relations between the two countries have for too long been defined on mostly military and national security terms, but they must also work together on the global economic crisis. Let's hear from Arlington, Virginia. Good morning, Democratic caller. Hi, good morning. Thank morning. you for taking my call. Sure. Um, with regard to Armenia-Turkey relations, uh, I understand in the last two days, uh, President Gül has announced that uh, there's no plans in the near future to open up the border between Armenia and Turkey. And in fact, uh, President, uh, excuse me, Prime Minister Erdogan has uh, focused once again in saying there are all sorts of preconditions in uh, warming up Armenia-Turkey relations, including uh, resolving the Karabakh conflict and, of course, uh, once again denying the Armenian genocide. So my question is, isn't this in fact, once again, this whole, all the reports by the Turkish government of war, the warming of relations, just essentially a charade and a ruse to try to get uh, third countries like the United States to continue to uh, their complicity in Turkey's genocide denial? Well, first of all, um, again, you use the word genocide, and no one's denying massacres and uh, killings uh, of uh, innocent victims in Turkey during that period. Secondly, the uh, Armenian foreign minister is coming, I believe, next week to Turkey for discussions about border openings. More Oklahoma. Good morning, Republican caller. Good morning. You're on the air with us. Okay. Uh, I served in the military in Korea in 1962, and there was a Turkish compound not too far from our compound, and we used to interact a lot and everything like that, and it was really a unique situation. We always enjoyed the Turks and they really liked peanuts, so we used to always carry a big can of peanuts around. We were sitting there talking to them. But in um, there over there, we had, like around our compound, we had 10 feet of concertina wire around our compound. And uh, the, the uh, Korean slicky boys at nighttime would come through the fence 10 or 12 times. Around the Turkish compound, they had one strand of uh, concertina wire, and they didn't have a problem at all. Now, this uh, probably was because that they didn't tolerate a whole lot from uh, anybody coming into their compound. I remember in one incident where that they caught a uh, thief in the compound, and they hung him up at the gate, and they just left him there for a while, and they finally everybody uh, complained about the U.N. forces and all that, and they took him down. But they didn't have any more, um, you know, uh, problems there. 
Now, as, as far as the uh, United States went at that time, we had a uh, very bad policy in North Korea, and uh, John F. Kennedy was the president at that time. He took all the ammunition away from us to make us look a kinder, gentler army. And uh, after nine GIs were killed, and the last one, uh, one evening came over and visited us, and he was shot that night by a North Korean patrol. Uh, then they gave us our ammunition back, but only for a short time. They gave us, then they reduced it back down to one magazine. And uh, so our policies and the Turkish policies were, uh, you know, they were a lot stricter and hardline than we were. But we need to get back to a little bit of hardline on ourselves as far as the Turkish people go. I think they're uh, great people. I think that they've uh, strived to do, done a lot, and they're a strong supporter of the United States. And everybody's always talking about genocide with the Armenians and everything like that, which is a bad deal. Don't get me wrong. But we also have a couple of words in our history that are kind of bad, too, manifest destiny. All right, Oklahoma. Any reaction to our... Uh, uh, I concur what you're saying. <laughs> President Obama this morning, just a short while ago, held a news conference with uh, President Abdullah Gull. He made some comments to reporters. We're going to show you some of what the president had to say, and we'll be right back.